Thanks. Happy to be here. Um, I hope to share some, uh, some of the revolutionary developments ongoing with small, small planes. Um, I normally rent planes out of uh, Stockholm Flying Club here at Bromma. This is one of them, one of those planes. And right here, right now, where we are is at, uh, just behind the tail there, if you recognize yourselves. So that's where we are. But we just had a break, so let's start with a just quick exercise. Um, any pilots here in the audience? Hands up. Yeah, how about that? Keep the hands up. Um, anyone who's been flying these kind of planes? Keep the hands up, up with them. Any kind of small airplane? Hands up. All right, keep them up loud, so we, I mean high, so we can see them. Good, good. How many would want to go flying in a small plane like this? Hands up. Yeah, yeah, there's still a few. of. Keep them up, keep them up. There's still a few. Uh, how many would say never, never, ever in a plane like that? And now you, you can keep them hands up, you know? <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, potentially for, for one of you, or a few of you at the end, if you're a little bit aware of this, I'll, I'll have something for you at the end as, as well. So, um, these small airplanes, this is what they've been looking like for many, many, many years. Lots of clocks, right? Clocks and clocks and clocks. Lots of clocks. And in the middle there, you see a little color display. So it's, it's snuck in a little bit of, of GPS color mapping into the aircrafts, right? Um, this is a plane I rent sometimes. Lots of advanced clocks. For a small plane, this is really advanced. You have, and you have all kinds of autopilots automatically climb up, have an, hold an alt altitude, waypoints, and, and all that stuff, right? Still clocks. But you see, I pimped it up a little bit, right? So that's the way it normally looks when I fly. I have my color GPS on the dashboard, color map. Yeah? Here's an example of uh, fewer clocks. A uh, little bit easier to fly. But still, you see, this one is also pimped up, right? See this GPS on the left-hand side there? Small black. You know, have you heard of the Bermuda Triangle? where uh, ships and planes mysteriously disappeared for many, many, many years. You know, when the GPS came, the Bermuda Triangle disappeared. So, just a few words on general aviation, what it is. You see, there's lots of airports, and the figures are a few years old, so they might have been slightly different today, but lots of airports. And there's lots of money invested in small aircrafts. And this is in, in, in this country, as you see. Uh, you spend a lot of hours in the air. It's, it's bigger than we think, actually. And the last bullet there, when you look into it, flying club. It's not only that you meet lots of fun people, it actually works like a carpool. So it's, it's a place, it's an aircraft pool. You kind of cannot afford to buy a plane, well, some can, but you only pay for the time you're airborne. And flying clubs work exactly like carpools. And we find this is something that most people don't know about. Anyways, going back into to these kind of cockpits, we can say this is pretty much history. We don't have to, uh, to look at this uh, much more. What it looks like today is more like this. And you have one pretty much two uh, digital displays in the middle, one uh, with a large map, and they've been simplified quite a bit. And there's a few clocks in there as, as backup, as you see. But this kind of environment is, is where, you know, lots of research has gone into this the past uh, years. A um, lot of improvements in all these areas. Um, one example, to start one of these uh, clock machines, it's a little bit of uh, fiddling, you have to do a number of things. Um, a modern plane, it's a button, you push and it starts. And once you start flying, you have to uh, adjust and, and, and fix a little bit in, in uh, one of the older planes. In this kind of plane, it's one lever. So it's a start button and one lever. You look at sound, um, they tried to measure the sound level of, of some of these new planes at Frölunda here, and they couldn't get a good reading because the birds were singing. And it's not like we have extremely loud birds in Sweden, it's, it's just 
it was difficult for them to measure. In some countries, US, for example, they have those big weather radars that covers and give us the, the weather, and what kind of uh, thunderstorms, rains, etc. They are, the data is transmitted over radio and overlaid on the map. So you can see while you're flying, you know, if, if you have a thunderstorm or, or what kind of rain, or is it heavy, should I go around or not? So a lot of uh, developments in this space. And then you, I got a question here in the break. So, so why do people fly? Well, transportation. That's, you know, transportation. For, as we heard earlier today, recreation, uh, uh, holidays, for fun, uh, sports, a lot of sports activities, search and rescue, it's quite a bit of, of that, also with small planes. And at Stockholm Flying Club, one of many flying clubs, we have lots of people actually renting planes and using them for transportation in the business. So, like you use a car for, for business travel, they use small airplanes for business travel. And, um, you know, straight to the point, no stopovers, quite simple. So how far do you get? Well, this is a you know, modern plane. If you fly for three hours, this is the range from here, Stockholm. Quite far, isn't it? About 180 knots, if, if you take that. And that's, that's how far you get. And this is just the flying for three hours. If you uh, look at most of these modern planes, the range on one tank is almost twice that. This is a, a huge development compared to what it used to look like. This plane is called Pantera. It's an example of, of state-of-the-art design. There are many examples. This is one that was shown for the very first time last week, actually. So, brand new. And uh, it does 200 knots, 360 kilometers an hour, takes 10 gallons per hour. Um, has an electric hybrid in the pipeline for silent takes, takeoffs and landings. A full electric version ties in with what we heard earlier about batteries and standardizations uh, for shorter flights, and I'm sure that will develop even further. If you open up, if you look into the plane, you go in, you find navigation as one example. It's a, it's a map for those of you who are in the, in the tablet space. You know, it's a map. You push, touch, drag, sort of draw your, your route. I want to go from here to there and push autopilot. Done. I think you still have to start the planes, but I'm sure there's somewhere you can invent something for that as well. If not already invented, I think. Um, and for those of you who were a little bit wary of, uh, of flying, you know, if everything goes wrong, these kind of planes, they come equipped with standard equipment. It's a parachute. So if everything goes wrong, you pull the chute, and it slows down, brings you brings it down to ground. It doesn't get much safer than that to fly. And we've come quite a bit, quite far from, from these days, these kind of planes. And it's been more development in small airplanes than in the past 10 years than we have in the previous 50. There's a lot of developments ongoing. Well, this is a very short session, so I hope I shared some, some insights into uh, what goes on in small uh, aircraft uh, developments. And um, it's a mystery to me why we don't hear more of these things. That's really a mystery. So if you're interested, um, here's a few places where you, can, uh, where you can start. Don't wait. And please, spread the word. I'll be here for the rest of the day. Thank you.